So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly replace your tie-in belt on your old 16-valve Volkswagen. So if you're not familiar with this car, this is the Chiraco I picked up a few weeks ago that's been sitting for over 20 years. And a lot of its maintenance has been neglected. Before I jump into it, I just wanna make sure that everything is in working order so that when this thing does eventually start, nothing goes awry and make sure that doesn't happen. Going over the time belt is one of the main things I wanted to do. So this time belt has not been changed in over 20 years and the possibility that it could snap when I try to strike this thing is pretty high. So I just wanna make sure before I go to start it, everything is all good to go. So as you can see, the time belt has seen better days. It, it does feel a little dry rotted. I know you can't feel that through the video, but it, is, it does feel pretty dry. So I'm very glad that I'm going to replace this before we try to start this thing. So to all you old forum guys, yes, we're doing this the right way. I got a Bentley here and I have the page bookmark that we need. So we're gonna run through the pages uh, for doing the camshaft timing, camshaft drive belt. And we're just gonna run page by page here. And we're gonna do it as the Bentley says. So now the car's jacked up, wheels out of the way and fender liners out of the way. We can kind of get a better idea of what's going on down here. So in this setup, there's actually four belts. You have a belt for the power steering, the AC, the alternator, and obviously the, the timing belt. So let's first start with cleaning out some of the rust and debris and corrosion from years of driving in this car to see if we can get them out a little easier. Now I really, really, really don't want to snap any of these bolts. So I'm going to use some coil on there. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to get some lunch. So the next step is to get off these V-belts. So on a car this old, it might not be as easy as it sounds. In fact, mine is not as easy as it sounds because I'm gonna have to cut off the belts because I simply, everything is so frozen, I can't adjust anything. But what you're supposed to do if your car is not frozen is there's an adjustment bolt right here for the alternator, right down there, there's an adjustment for the AC compressor. And then coming back down here, there is an adjustment for the power steering. So what you do is you just loosen all of those. It should, uh, if you turn it counterclockwise, it'll loosen it and it'll pull it away from, it'll remove tightening from the system so you can slip the belts right off. Again, I can't do that because everything is so frozen in here. So I'm just gonna cut the belts off and then I will show you how they move once the belts are off. So as for belt routing, the, the power steering belt, similar to an ABA, gets routed around the crank pulley goes down to here to this pulley here, and then goes up one pulley here to the water pump. Coming up here, we can see that the AC belt goes down again from the crank pulley up to the AC belt, and then loops back around and down underneath and back to there. And then for the alternator, it just goes right off of the AC. Up. Now that I've loosened basically every single mounting bolt for these, you can see that these all move freely. That way that when we put the belts on, you can slip them, you can just slip them over and then tighten them up and they'll be tightened. So now we're just gonna get these poise out of the way, these two here, and that way we can get to the timing belt and the water pump. So before I turn over any of the rotating assembly, I'm gonna pull all the spark plugs out and add some marble mystery oil to each cylinder just to make sure that the cylinder walls are all looped up for when I'm turning it over since this car has been sitting for a pretty long time. do look a little crusty. At least whoever worked on this before me used the right spark plugs. Now I'm going to line this up with the top to get top dead center. So we take these four Allen bolts off, pull the crank pulley off, and then we'll have access to the crank sprocket. So after this car has been sitting for so long, these four Allens were very, very stuck. And these are bolts you definitely do not want to snap. So while resisting the urge to just impact all my problems away, I sprayed these again, let them sit overnight, and now I'm back at it. So now I'm gonna try to break these free again, and then we'll go from there. All right, 
right, well, that wasn't fun. But now if they're loose, I'm gonna take them out, set this thing to the top dead center, and then we'll go from there. Just for your viewing purposes, we'll take this little Sharpie and fill these guys in. So now I'm gonna hop back down to the crank pulley and I'm going to turn it until we see that hit top dead center. pulley's just gonna come right off. Oh, my light died. Yep, so that came right off. And that does not feel like it's gonna come right off. So, looks like we're gonna have to use some persuasion. Shocker, my water pump pulley is stuck on, so I'm gonna see if I can sneak this plastic piece past it without taking that off. So this is what we had to resort to to get this out. Screwdriver in the hole, 50 million extensions on the impact, and finally, she's out. So once your water pump pulley is off, you can then take the engine cover off. So the bottom bolt is a 10 mil and the Allen bolt that's also in there is a five millimeter. Uh, there's also a, two nuts on the top that are 10 mils. Once those are off, then what I found was easy is if you start from the bottom and push your way up, uh, you can start to get past the tensioner here. And then once you pull it, push it up enough, you should be able to pull it past the tensioner, but then it'll kind of go this way and it'll force itself kind of behind the AC condenser there. So then what I did was once it was free up here of the of the tensioner, I sort of slid it over and down and it just dropped right out the bottom and it came off fine. So now that's out of the way, I'm gonna loosen the tensioner and I'm gonna pop the old bell off so we can put the new one on. So now everything's out of the way. All we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the bolt right there on the tensioner and then we're gonna slip the belt off. So this is a 15 mil nut. We're just gonna crank this loose and as you can see, the tensioner is now loose and the belt has some slack to it. So now we can just slowly work off the belt from the system, making sure again that, that we're still at top dead center, which we are. So that way everything stays in place. Just, just slipping the belt off like this. We'll come right off the crank, sprocket down there, and our belt's off. So I actually have no idea how old this belt is, but it was definitely worse for wear and I needed to be replaced. So in this box, I've got everything that we need for this job, including new belts, tensioner, and I also have a water pump in here. Just, I figured while we're in here, might as well do it, so. All right, once again, I've been bent over by Volkswagen Audi engineers because you can't get the stupid tensioner off without the engine mount being out because it hits right here. And you can see that this has actually been done before because the paint is worn away where this mount would have been. So, you know, you're just trying to take this thing off. It's all wobbly and you just, you just can't get it off. There's just a little bit too much and you just, it doesn't come off. So got to take the engine mount out and shout out Robert Bentley for saying absolutely nothing about that. That's been absolutely useless. Okay. Yeah. Just take this off. Okay. The, nothing about jacking the engine up, nothing about any of that. So thanks. So while the engine mount bolt soaks, I guess we'll just do the water pump now. Oh. There's some green coolant coming out of there. Great. So now I have the alternator completely out and the AC compressor pulled out of the way. I have access to the water pump housing, which is right here. So now I got the hose disconnected there as well. So I'm gonna unbolt, do these bolts here, pull the water pump housing out, and then we can replace the water pump. So water pump is now out and it's a little, not very spinny, so. As you can see, it's kind of really, really gunked up in there. So I'm gonna clean this housing out and also as well as replace this water pump and the thermostat housing, and then we'll be all good. I have a feeling that this is gonna be interesting to split. We're gonna get some goop in here. So I wanna see what we got. Oh, so this is plastic. Oh, actually it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of junk in there, but 
I'll clean this out nice and do it and then we'll be fine. Gasket is basically non-existent, it's so, so old. This has probably never been done to be honest. Yeah, that's an OEM VW part. Here we go, I found some interesting stuff. There's lots of crud in here behind the thermostat. It's even coming out. Yeah, look at all that right there. It's just... Ew. I've honestly lost track of, <laughs> of all the stuff I've taken off at this point. But, got the engine jacked up, and now this bolt comes out for the engine mount. So now, I'm going to jack the engine up a little bit more. Then I can sneak this tensioner off here, and then we should be good to go. So now that we have the engine jacked up, we can take the old tensioner off and get the new tensioner here. And slide it on like so. Now you want to make sure that the two holes are facing outwards, so that way you can tension it. And then we'll just put the nut and the washer back on. We found it. And then we can reinsert our engine mount bolt. So now before we put the belt on, we verify that these time marks are lined up, as well as the bottom marks you can see down there on the crank pulley in white. You can see that the timing mark is matched up with the line on the cover. So we're just going to take the cover off and put the belt on. So I couldn't get a great angle of actually slipping the belt on, but the strategy that I used was, I first started up from the cam gear up here and I put pressure right here with my thumb and then worked it down. So I had the belt slack over where the tensioner is and it was just off to the side. And I came down, went around the oil drive pump gear and then looped it around the crank sprocket down there. And then once it was on all of the gears, I pushed up and over the tensioner here. That way uh, you want all the slack to be on the tensioner side. Like you want this part to be pretty tight even before the tensioner is actually tensioned. So they actually make a special tool for this tensioner and that's tool, this tool right here. Um, it's a little bit harder to do to tension the tensioner while it's in the car. Um, so this tool would definitely be handy. It's about $30 on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. But you can also just use a normal pair of needle nose pliers and shove them in the two in the two holes in the tensioner. You can actually see it on the old tensioner here. You kind of just shove the needle nose pliers into these holes. And then once it's in there, you tighten it like so. What you can do is if you don't have the special tool, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers like this and stick it into the two holes on the tensioner and twist up. Now, what I find difficult is because these are such small pliers and there's not a ton of leverage, you don't really necessarily get enough tension on the tensioner here to where I'm safe, where I am happy with. So here we're gonna take the special tool and we're going to slide it into place here. And now we can tension this up nice and good. Now, you don't want this to be super over tensioned you want to have about a 45 degree turn with the tensioner. So I'm just going to snug this up. The torque spec on this is 33 foot pounds and I will be torquing this to spec here in a sec. I just want to make sure this is not too over, over tightened. So as you can see, that's pretty good. Like you can't really twist it super, super far. Um, and that's not gonna go anywhere. You wanna make sure that these aren't too torqued because you can have run into an issue where this puts too much tension on the oil drive pump here and the bearings in there will, will wear out and it'll not, you'll not have a very fun time with that. So now that's good. I'm going to get my torque wrench out. It's set to 33 foot pounds already. So now I'm just gonna stick it on here. Push down to 33 foot pounds now. And we can see the belt twists about 45 degrees. 
and I'm gonna call that good. So honestly, for $30, this tool made it so much easier to tension down that tensioner and make sure it's good than just using the needle nose pliers that I would just honestly just spend the $30 instead of risking your timing belt not being tensioned enough. So now I have this water pump housing all cleaned up the best that I can. I have a new water pump in the box here, as well as a thermostat and a little plastic piece that holds it in place. So I'm gonna get this assembled and then get it back in the car. So now that I have the water pump housing on here, I'm gonna torque it down to 15 foot pounds. So once these two bolts and these two studs are installed, all torqued to 15 foot pounds, you can then move to putting on your accessory bracket. So now that we know that the timing is good, we're going to take these four bolts and torque them down to 15 foot pounds. So now that all those bolts are torqued down, it's time to put everything back together. So obviously this is just in the reverse of how everything was taken off. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is put on the AC compressor. And then after that, after bolting up all those bolts, put on the alternator and the alternator bracket. Once that is all installed, you then work towards putting on the belts and the pulleys that were taken off. So the first belt that has to go on out of the three accessory belts, there's a total of four with the time belt, but out of the three accessory belts, the first one that has to go on is the alternator because it's inset the most. Um, if you forget to put this one on, you're not gonna be able to get it on after the other ones. So at least without taking off a pulley or something like that. So put this one on first, and then you're gonna one on want to put on the AC and water pump belt. This one can be difficult to get on due to how it is located in here, but the way that I got it on easy, because I had this pulley still on for the power steering, I just left the pulley loose on the water pump. I got the uh, that inner belt on the uh, crank pulley, and then also on top of the AC compressor. And then once it was in place, I slid the water pump pulley on and then slipped the belt over. That way I could tension it up and it wouldn't interfere with any of the other belts. And then the power steering belt was pretty straightforward, just pretty much slipped right on with everything still in place. So congratulations, your 16 belt Volkswagen is now fully timed. I hope this video will help keep some of these older Volkswagens running another day. If you like this video and want to support the channel, please subscribe. Also, check out my website, clap.co. This is my small apparel brand that I just built, and I would really appreciate it if you took a look at all the products on there. And I have a ton of Volkswagen-inspired merchandise, as well as, you know, merchandise just for us car guys and clothes that's affordably priced that we can just beat up in the garage doing jobs like this. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.